So there's 30 innovations. I'm not going to have time to talk about all of them. I'm not sure how I'm going for time, but um, I think I'd like to talk about the main ones. And uh, you know, the, the, I think the most important ones are, are the slab, the walls, and the windows. You know, obviously we've got um, some clever stuff in this house. We've got 18 solar panels on the roof. We've got uh, the first salt water batteries in the country, so we can store some electrical energy. We've got um, a heated floor and a fully insulated slab, and we've got um, high performance thermal envelope with um, European style recessed windows, and we've got uh, fully insulated, um, uh, yeah, just super insulated. So um, we've got rainwater harvesting, grey water recycling, um, a very um, clever electrical design with a lot of um, sensors and the house is wired a little bit differently. Um, so anyway, moving on. The slab, <coughs> this is a drawing which shows the slab. The red is the insulation. So in most houses, there's a, if you're lucky, there's a, a 50 mil bit of poly, polystyrene under the slab. There's nothing under the, the edge body and there's nothing at the edge. Um, Critically, 80% of the heat is actually lost out of that edge because the ground temperature is more constant. It could be 8 degrees, um, could be minus 5 um, in Dunedin, outside. And um, so the heat finds its way to the weakest link and it's going to be that edge there. So, and and we, we don't do anything there. But in this house we used an insulated panel at the edge. It's permanent insulated formwork. We got to an R value of 3.36, that's three times code. Just about everything in this house is three times what the building code calls for, and uh, it's not three times the cost. So a better way of doing it, um, or an even more high performance solution would be max raft, which is uh, probably about 4.5 uh, in terms of the thermal value or R value. Max raft is just a fully integrated uh, <coughs> system. They have um, foam forms that are pre-plastered and pre-finished and it just goes together like Lego. But, so this one here we use the, the um, other mag rock one and um, it's, we, we took it a step further, we insulated under the footings. So this is a fairly typical foundation in Christchurch now after the earthquakes because we've got um, dodgy soft ground in a lot of places. So, uh, these pods here, they're not there for insulation. You know, some people, lay persons, they see that going, going in and around town and think, great, it's going to be warm, it's lots of polystyrene. They do nothing. Because remember I said 80% of the heat is lost out the edge. So um, the pods are there to form these beams to make the floor, to create an enhanced slab and make the floor stronger. So they're not there for insulation. So the important part is the edge. So Max Raft have this interesting photo uh, where, you can, see, can you see what's happening here? This is actually a photo from down this way, down the central Otago. So the ground's frozen and they've got no, no edge insulation on their slab and they've got a heated floor. So they're actually heating the garden. <laughs> so this year, that would be a great place to plant the, the tomatoes or the citrus. Uh, but it would be a much smarter idea to heat the house rather than heating the garden. Uh, so, underfloor heating, water, really energy efficient, particularly if you heat it with solar uh, electricity. So basically how this works in our house is we take solar power, not solar hot water. Thermal solar is, I think, a bit of a dinosaur, so we're taking solar power we're using that to power an energy efficient tiny heat pump and it's a one kilowatt input heat pump. So basically we're producing four kilowatts of hot water from one kilowatt of solar energy. That's just normal, that's how a heat pump works. We're first of all putting that hot water into our hot water cylinder which is a, a bigger special cylinder, twice as big as it needs to be. So we're using that as a heat sink. Water is a really good storage medium for energy. Heat energy. So that has a little pump at the bottom, a little bit hard to see, but that pump pumps the water through the floor if the thermostat tells us that there's space heating required. So through our hydronic underfloor heating system. 
and because we've fully insulated the floor, I really see that floor as a battery. So we're storing solar energy in the floor indirectly. And also the hot water cylinder, that's a battery too. And then we've got our battery batteries. Sorry, sorry to interrupt, but in putting one of those in the house, looking at the size of it, obviously that's why you build two story houses. Um, no, you, could, you could have a smaller, fatter one, or that's actually only um, two metres, 2.1 metres, I think. So it just sneaks, sneaks in there under the stairs. But I mean, we're, in the single story house, we had the same size one, and we had a pitched roof, and it was actually up in the roof space. Oh, okay. Um, so there's ways to do it. Yeah. Um, so anyway, the um, yeah. So in any home, whether it's good or bad, probably 70% of the energy requirement is thermal, and 30% is electrical. So for the stuff that you plug in um, and your lighting. Um, the thermal is your hot water heating and your space heating. So here, our thermal energy is free because we're using solar. And in actual fact, we only use that when it's uh, when we're generating power. So it's on a daylight sensor, so it doesn't operate at night. So this house is good enough at holding the heat that we don't need to do any heating at night. Even if it's a frosty morning, it's still 20 degrees inside the house with no heating running all night. And um, then when the sun comes out, just clicks in and starts heating up the hot water again. There's batteries. And we, we are actually grid tired too, but um, so we're energy positive, but um, you know, if there's a snowstorm and there's no sun for a week, we're grid tired for that. Um, Do you incorporate geothermal and things like that? No. Yeah, I think. Um, we don't really get cold enough for that to be um, pay off and be a cost positive thing because it's quite a capital cost to, to do that. Yeah. Possibly, yeah. I know, you know, it, it makes sense um, in colder countries, you know, like European countries where it gets to minus 10, minus 15, that sort of thing. But our air to water heat pump works fine and um, our, you know, uh, reasonably temperate sort of climate, you know, in Christchurch. Yeah. But um, so we did thermal imaging. I won't go into the details of this because I don't have time. But basically, this we got a sophisticated thermal imaging camera, and it showed that we weren't leaking heat, um, and uh, the building is performing really well. So the walls. So this the top one is the traditional way of doing timber framing. So we, you know, this is this ten star house we were showing conventional. Uh, materials and we're showing how to do things differently. So the next step on from timber framing is panelised construction. The passive house that I showed you, I think I forgot to mention, but that took two and a half days to put together. The slab went down on the Saturday, the walls were made off-site in a factory, the roof panels, the um, floor panel for the mid-floor, everything arrived on trucks with high abs, the windows arrived, the steel arrived, they started on Tuesday, they were finished by Thursday lunchtime, so they had the day off on Friday. So that house just landed and went together in two and a half days. The good thing about that is no scaffold, less time on site, and also everything doesn't get wet, so it's, it's going to be dry. So what happens to all the timber frame houses that are sitting in the rain, all the water? But anyway, this is the, a new way of doing timber framing. It's called Jib Fix Framing System. So the bottom one is the new way, the top one is the old way. So three studs at the junctions, not required here. So the red is the amount of insulation you can fit in. So basically more insulation, less timber. It's also stronger, it's also cheaper because you've got less timber. Um, so that will be the new normal way of doing framing. We also did thicker walls. We did 140 thick walls and we used LBL, which is laminated veneer lumber, which is um, basically like plywood from the land of the giants. It's um, straighter, builders love it because it's quicker, they don't have to spend days straightening the walls. And it's actually more sustainable because there's less waste. So uh, there's no sound here, but it doesn't matter. So this is just a little animation that just describes that system. So the wind can whistle through these joints here, there's no insulation. You actually can't physically put the insulation in once the cladding goes on. Um, so instead of having three bits of timber, 
we put more insulation in. And the walls are screwed in, uh, they're glued, the jib is glued and screwed to a metal angle, so there's little lightweight metal angles going there. And um, it provides uh, better finish too, so there's less likelihood of the fixing to pop and cracking. Um, so there's a lot of advantages. And then um, the, dr the dwangs come vertical, so you can run the insulation continuously. But um, that's me there running around. Oh, I'm on a funny angle. Doesn't, doesn't normally do that. But that's me running around taking the dwangs out. And uh, that was good fun, didn't take off. So the dwangs were vertical. And um, so you could have con continuous insulation, but I removed them completely, so you can just get thicker insulation in there. And the other thing is, if you haven't got dwangs, see, um, you, you can run your plumbing and electrical without cutting, drilling holes. So see the green there, that's a rigid air barrier. So that provides uh, better strength, and it also makes the house more airtight, the rigid air barrier, instead of a uh, wrap. So um, that was an advantage too. Um, so windows, last but not least, windows. How are we going for time? 10 minutes? Oh, that's pretty good. I have time for questions once I talk about windows. So basically, that's, sorry, another drawing, but um, that's a drawing straight out of the building home. And that shows a window installed flush, overlapping the cladding, and that's how we do it, because that's how we're told to do it by the building home in this country. So the problem with that is this is the weatherboard, this is the jib board, so, you know, the drainage and ventilation cavity, you know, I was talking about the solar wall, um, that's where our window sitting. So that's got cold air in it all day, every day. And it can have moisture in it. And um, that's where our window sitting. So the pink is the warm part of the wall where our insulation is. Um, so we can do that. It's standard practice overseas, European countries, to recess the windows. So we recess the window into the wall so it's in the warm part of the wall. <coughs> um, we used uh, UPVC window frames and we used high performance glass. Our windows are three to four times the performance of double glazed aluminium windows. So aluminium windows are a really um, seldom used product overseas but the, we're a bit of an oddity in New Zealand. 95% of our windows are aluminium. But um, things are changing. There's a major manufacturer of it. Uh, aluminium windows who have set up a factory in Christchurch to make PVC windows. Um, and uh, they're much, much better. So, um, if you look closely at an aluminium window, there's a drainage channel at the bottom, a little uh, graveyard for dead flies and uh, a place where the mould gathers at the bottom of the window frame. So, that's because the window will have condensation on it. Condensation occurs where the cold meets the warm. And that Glass is exactly where the cold meets the wall. And but if you look closely at that channel at the bottom, there's holes drilled in it for the condensation to drain outside. So you can do this is what I say about you know you've got to think about everything together. You know you could do thicker insulation in your roof. You could do thicker walls with insulation. You could do a fully insulated slab. If you don't do something do your windows properly, then there's a hole in the bucket basically. You could do a nice warm energy efficient house and still have holes drilled through, through your aluminium window frames to the cold air outside. That is standard practice in New Zealand. <coughs> um, so the other things, there's a heavily recessed window, sort of European style, with a, a purpose made flashing. So we're doing this now. This is what we did in the 10 star home, we recessed the window. <coughs> That's a picture of the 10 star home there. So anyway. Windows, I see them as a hole in the wall. So they're a tenth of the thermal value of the wall. Um, so that's how you need to think about them. So don't have too many windows. Don't have any on the south side if you can manage it. Um, because there's never going to be any sun coming in there. So um, the orientation and proportions of the windows are critically important. But other than that, what are the windows? In New Zealand, we don't have triple glazing. Um, we have double glazing. In Europe, triple glazing is standard. If you want double glazing, it's more expensive because they don't do it. It's a special order. 
So in here, the, trip, the double glazing has a skinny gap between the glass. So first of all, we need to do bigger, a bigger gap. There's also a piece of aluminium, standard, for the major glazing companies. So you want a piece of plastic there, you want a piece of aluminium, because that's thermal conductive. You know, great if we want a solar wall and get the heat through, but not good for our windows. So, Thermex spacer, it's not expensive, but you don't get it unless you ask for it. Um, PVC frames, much better, non-conductive. The best advancement in Windows is low E, so 30% better performance. Low E is a coating on the um, inside of the double glazer. So there's three levels of low E, we use the top one, low E XL. Argon doesn't do a heck of a lot, but it's cheap, so we do it, 10% better performance. So our windows are 0 0.7, a good PVC window is 0.53, a typical double glazed aluminium window is 0.26. I actually think because we've recessed them, which is critically important, putting the window in the warm part of the wall is much better than that. It's probably more like one. Anyway, we talked about air tightness, so I'll skip over that. We blow a door test for our 10 stay at home. It was 2.8 air changes, so it was just within the European standard. Um, New Zealand is 10. Um, but we're learning, we're doing better next time. We didn't use the internal wraps on that job, but we're using the internal wraps going forward. Um, there's a lot to think about. Um, thanks very, mu uh, very much, everybody. There's a website with information on it. You're welcome to come and have a look at these houses if you ever get up to Christchurch. Are you going to have another one of those? Yeah, we're repeating the um, Exemplar Homes Tour in May uh, next year, and we're also doing it in Auckland and Wellington. So we've launched the Super Home Movement in Auckland and Wellington. And are there any designers or builders in this room? No? Okay, I'm looking for people to launch the Super Home Movement in Otago. Oh, we've got, we've got, we've got an architect uh, in Otago. Yeah, structure because it was a two and a half day home. Yeah, great. They're the way of the future. Yeah. Um, well, we've got uh, PVC windows, but I might be a little bit dirty about them. You can recycle them. I think it's pretty important. Yeah, well, I think PVC, it's, it's not a particularly um, environmentally friendly thing, but when you put, put, look at it in context with what it's doing for you, it is. It's a bit like concrete. Concrete's a pretty nasty material, uses lots of energy. But if you've got thermal mass in your building, it'll um, really pay off over time. So the amount of energy you use through the life of the building is um, uh, you know, many times over what you'll use in producing the concrete. Mm. But what about the recycling system? Recycling products. Yeah, we don't have that, unfortunately. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, about um, structurally insulated panels, what about toxicity, like one product versus another? Yeah, yeah I like natural materials. Like, I mean, those panels there, they, we made whole wall sections rather than making like, yeah. individual mm -hmm. modules. And we just yeah, put them on the truck, put them to the site. They were made from LVL timber, plywood, um, wall insulation, <coughs> with the uh, wall. Cheap cheap? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then um, we had uh, the goods, air tight wraps. Uh, and uh, yeah, so, um, you know, some people don't like polystyrene. You know, it's, it's kind of, it, it's used a lot in the building industry because it's a cheap um, insulation material. It's probably nothing wrong with it, but, uh, you know, there are other considerations, you know, uh, if you're thinking about the sort of, Environmentally sound materials that you're using. There's, there's, there's a bunch of choices. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah our, I mean, we've done three mangrove houses, but our system of choice now is the, the um, plywood uh, timber wall insulation. Yeah. Uh, a little bit. It's 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 not uh, surprisingly little compared to conventional construction, but it, it will be slightly more. Um, did you learn any slag core from earthquakes? Like you know, what I what I can imagine if you've got 
and this point, which is like a wave, you've just got a solid piece of concrete that's going to buckle on the end and crack and <coughs> crack out basically. We've learnt shitloads after the operation. <laughs> um, and the slabs that we're doing now with the, the raft slabs or waffle slabs, uh, uh, designed specifically for that, yeah. 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 Um, it, it's going to be quick, it's, it's going to be finished fairly shortly, but uh, I'm not sure about that. So we need to ask the client. What well, reckon this time we started moving insulation outside the structural frame, and so the dew point as that moisture moves in and out of the frame. It's where it should be, yeah. Is that what you're doing with your yeah. plywood system, or are you still putting your backs up oh, the um, dead starters uh, inside the frame? Yeah, well, the houses we're doing now, we're doing with the, um, the panel house, um, we, uh, we've got to. We've got a cavity which is sealed airtight with the membranes for insulation, and then we've got a cavity inside that for the services, for the plumbing electrical. Um, some of the best houses we've done are actually insulated concrete panel houses. So there's a sandwich panel, there's a small um, skin of concrete on the outside, then there's the insulation, and then there's a larger structural skin on the inside. Those are brilliant houses because they have a lot of thermal mass and uh, if it's designed well, all the junctions are designed with no thermal bridging. They're some of the best performing houses that Can we've you done. Get out of the house which you've created by normal. You need a you need a ventilation system. So in any airtight house, you need a ventilation system. And how do they deal with if you're pumping air in during heat recovery? How do you deal with the humidity level, which wouldn't change if you're pumping humid air in? Um, the air inside. There's always more. There's more moisture in the air inside the house than inside the house. Sometimes the humidity will be better outside, but the higher the humidity level outside than the inside in this environment. Yeah. Um, How do you deal with that? Because they don't have generally the humidification systems with those different systems. Yeah, I think. Um, the, yeah, I think generally because you're moving that air, you, you're taking the moisture out of the house. You know, it's probably something so that... pumping air in there the high humidity, which happens yeah. here, that's very high, that's tough. Yeah, but <coughs> I think, I mean, it's probably getting a bit technical, but, you know, it's probably, it might be a good idea to talk to uh, a heating ventilation expert. Yeah, but, okay. I mean, the, the thing is, if the air is warmer, the um, relative humidity can be higher, so the warmer air can hold more moisture than colder air, so that's how condensation works. So basically, the temperature inside the house is warmer. You're going to get um, more um, potential to hold that humidity, and also more drying because you're heating the house. Is there any other questions? Thank you very much.